All right, Ricky, I need to take you to task on something. <laughs> okay, we normally do like a short intro video clip to these Timber Talk Tuesdays, but uh, go ahead, what's up? Look, I've heard you say in a number of these mass timber videos that designing the structural grid for the maximum amount of efficiency is really important. Yeah, that's right, I've said that. Okay, but what exactly does that mean? How do you actually measure the efficiency of a mass timber structural grid? You know, actually, that's a good point. I could see having some metrics, some quantifiable way of measuring the relative grid efficiencies on a mass timber project would be useful. Why don't we have a conversation about that today? All right, good. Now, I imagine that a lot of this is probably very project specific, depending on things like fire resistance ratings and structural loads. But are there actually some rules of thumb that can be applied across the board between different projects? Well, for sure. Definitely project specific. You know, it's going to vary based on what are the structural loads in the building? What are you going for? Construction types, fire ratings, acoustics performance. So those things are definitely going to have an impact on this relative look. But why don't we take a look at, for the purposes of actually having a quantifiable metric, we're going to look at some scenarios today of timber volume per square foot of project. So it's a cubic foot of timber per square foot of project. Oh, that's interesting. I like that. So I can see how that could translate from one project to the next. So essentially what you're doing is adding up the timber volume within a given area, whether that's just a single bay or the entire floor plate, dividing that volume of timber by that presumed area, and that's going to give you a ratio of cubic feet of timber per square foot of building. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's a ratio. You know, it's cubic foot of timber per square foot of building. All right, so why is that the metric you would choose to measure efficiencies in grids? What is that going to tell us? Well, and this is where I like to go back to a presentation slide that I've seen Timber Lab present at before when doing mass timber talks. And that's kind of this pie chart overall estimation of how do the relative costs of a mass timber package break down. And what they've generally said is that about 65% of the overall cost of a mass timber package is tied up in the material itself, the volume of timber fiber. Wow, that's, that's actually a lot higher than I would have assumed and a lot higher than other structural materials where, where generally those other materials would be driven more so by labor cost. But what you're saying with mass timber is that a big portion of the overall cost is tied directly to the volume of the materials themselves. Is that right? Exactly, yeah. So we can really start to hone in on the efficiencies of the timber use on a given project. And today we're going to do that by looking at this ratio, volume of timber fiber per square foot of building. Got it. Okay, so let's take a look. What is an efficient ratio for mass timber grids? Right, so if we start taking a look at this ratio, I think one thing that's really important to point out up front is the impact, the significant impact, that the thickness of the floor panel has, floor and roof panel, has on this overall ratio. Because of the fact that these panels are uncovering the entire surface, the entire square footage of the building, those are going to have a huge impact on the overall ratio and therefore grid efficiency. So designing those to the thinnest possible that still works obviously for the structural loads we need, as well as the construction types and fire ratings, that's gonna have a big impact on overall grid efficiency. So if I start running some of those numbers, let's say I wanted to look at the impact of a, a three-ply floor panel versus a five-ply floor panel. If I just take those numbers, let's say you're four and an eighth inches thick three-ply floor panel, just dividing that thickness and based on a 12 inch by 12 inch square, over that area, I can get a, about 0.34 cubic feet of timber per square foot of building. Now, if I look at a five ply panel, run those same numbers, assuming a six and seven eighths inch thick panel, that number is going to jump up to about 0.57 cubic feet of timber. So you're right, I can see how this thickness of panel is having a direct impact on this ratio and therefore on the overall grid efficiency for a mass timber project. Yeah, exactly. So that's where I would go back to things like, you know, construction type, fire resistance ratings. Those are all going to have an impact on what is that most efficient panel thickness. All right. So we know kind of this panel thickness is pretty important in terms of dialing that in for grid efficiencies. Do you have an example you can take us through, help us understand what these numbers actually mean? Right. Yeah. So let's let's jump into an example. So let's say we're looking at a, a seven story office building. Now we're going to look at three different construction types. The seven story office building is right on the edge of three different construction types that have three different fire resistance rating requirements. So let's say our first option we're gonna look at is type four HT. Now this doesn't have any prescriptive fire resistance rating. We can do up to six stories of mass timber office space, which means we would need to do that first story above grade as a type 1A non-combustible podium. Second option we're gonna look at is type 3A construction. Now we have a one hour fire resistance rating for all of the structural elements. Again, we can do six stories of mass timber construction over one story above grade 
non-combustible podium. And then the third option we're gonna look at is type 4C construction, which allows us to go full seven stories of mass timber construction. In this case, we do have two hour fire resistance rating requirements. All right, so essentially neglecting the fact that two of those options have a podium, one doesn't, which is not an insignificant difference. But for now, setting those differences aside, we basically have three options with three different fire resistance rating requirements. So yeah, so this really goes back to what we talked about a second ago, and that is dialing in the panel thickness first, which is most efficient for that construction type. So let's start out by looking at type 4HT construction. Remember we said this doesn't have any prescriptive fire resistance rating. So therefore, let's see if we can make a three ply panel work, because that's generally the thickest we're gonna be able to use. Now, let's assume this project has a 25 foot by 30 foot grid. A three ply panel is generally most efficient for floor spans at about a 10 foot span. So if we say our 30 foot grid, we're gonna break up into 10 foot spacings of our panel. So two intermediate beams in that bay. If we run that analysis using a three ply panel, this is gonna give us a ratio of about 0.5 cubic feet of timber per square foot of building. All right, so that's our 4HD option, no prescriptive fire resistance ratings. What about the 3A option? All right, so next option is type 3A construction. Now we do have a one hour fire resistance rating requirement in this case. So because of that, we're gonna bump up our panel thickness from three ply to five ply so that we can achieve that one hour fire resistance rating. Now it's not efficient though for a five ply to span 10 feet like it was for a three ply. So instead of two intermediate beams per bay, we're gonna cut that down to one intermediate beam per bay, span that five ply panel 15 feet in this case in our 30 foot bay. All right, so we increase the panel thickness, reduce the number of beams, but I'm guessing those beams might have to get a little bit larger because now they're spaced further apart and meeting a one hour fire resistance rating. Yes, yeah, so we add all of those up for this 3A option. This gives us a ratio of about 0.73 cubic feet of timber per square foot of building. Certainly an increase above the option of type 4HT, which gave us about 0.5 for that same ratio. Interesting. Okay, you said the third option was 4C, which requires a two hour fire resistance rating. I'm guessing that also is gonna have an impact on those member sizes. Yeah, it probably will. And it probably it's more gonna impact the beams and columns instead of the floor panel. We can generally still get a two hour fire resistance rating with a five ply floor panel. So it's probably gonna have an impact on those beams and columns, bumping up those sizes a little bit so that they can still achieve a two hour fire resistance rating. Got it. So I imagine we're probably gonna end up with a slightly higher ratio here because of that two hour rating requirement. Exactly, yeah. So this one is the highest ratio for 4C. We do get a ratio of about 0.82 cubic feet of timber per square foot of building. So definitely the highest option of the three. However, I think it's important to point out that this one does allow full seven stories of mass timber construction, eliminates the podium, has the added value of mass timber on that lowest level. There's also some differences between these construction types, which we haven't discussed that could impact value and cost. I'm not gonna go into those here, but I think that at least looking at the relative grid efficiencies between the three types illustrates the impact that fire resistance ratings have and construction types have on different mass timber grid options. Well, and the fact that two of those options require a one story above grade podium, one doesn't, that's certainly gonna have an impact on cost. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think this metric too is also really useful, not so much just looking at construction type options, but also looking at just grid option. Let's say you already know what your construction type is going to be for your project. Then you can then use it to evaluate, you know, well, what's the impact of a 20 by 20 grid, 25 by 25 grid, 30 by 30 grid, single beams, double beams, three ply, five ply. You can really run a bunch of different scenarios and come back to this core ratio to evaluate the relative differences of the timber grid system on any given project. You know, I like this. I think this is providing a way of looking at grid efficiencies and overall differences between systems for a mass timber project. Certainly something to be looked at early on preliminary. And I think it can help narrow those choices down as you evaluate different systems for mass timber. Exactly, definitely, definitely project specific, definitely has some caveats here, but hopefully this is useful information that people can start to use to evaluate the relative efficiencies of one grid relative to another on mass timber projects. You know, I'm, I'm glad you brought this up today. I think this is a useful piece of information that people can use going forward. I thank you so much for having this conversation with me today. We thank you all for joining us. Until next time, we'll see you later.